Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're going through the 2021 OWASP Top 10 Security Risks, and the number 10 risk is server-side request forgery, SSRF. All right, so this category is added, so it's new to the 2021 list, right? So it was not there on the 2017 list. And this was interesting, it was the number one risk that uh, came from the community survey that was done. So I know I've mentioned the survey a couple of times, um, but this one, this one specifically did not have a lot of data uh, based on the, the uh, you know, applications that OWASP tested and all that stuff. But the survey, the community survey that came in said, hey, this is the number one thing from the survey. So it was added to the top 10. So there's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, you know, issues around server-side request forgery. So server-side request forgery, this happens or this occurs whenever a web application fetches a remote resource without validating a user supplied URL, right? So it, it, uh, it effectively allows an attacker to, to like coerce, if you will, coerce the application to send a request to an unexpected destination, even when that destination is protected by like a firewall or a VPN or some kind of other you know, network access control list, that kind of thing. So you're, you're kind of getting around those things. Um, and certainly as modern web applications uh, provide these end users with convenient features. The, these fetching a URL becomes a very common scenario, um, and it's even more common. And it becomes a more you know a, a higher risk issue uh, based on like cloud services and and complex architectures uh, that are starting to gain traction uh, today. So anyway, so nonetheless, this is uh, this is a big deal. The server side request forgery. So I wanted to kind of draw a picture of how this works. Okay, so let's say you have. Uh, your awesome application right here, right? And you have users that want to access your application, of course, right? Well, let's say that um, this particular application is like a shopping application, all right? So we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go shopping today, right? Online shopping, everybody does that, right? And uh, and so you one one of the features of this online shopping application allows the user to check and see if an item is in stock. So I'll just put, you know, in, in stock, right? Question mark. Um, and so the way that it accomplishes that function is the application sends a query uh, back to a backend REST API. So I'm gonna put just a little, you know, here's a REST API that, uh, that the application would send a query to. So effectively what happens is the user sends an HTTP request into the application and says, hey, is this item in stock? I'm trying to buy this thing, right? And then the application then in turn crafts a back-end RESTful uh, API call back to a, a back-end REST API endpoint. And then the API endpoint returns and then the application returns to the user, you know, hey, here the item's in stock or not, right? So that's the functionality of what's going on here. And so in a typical scenario, what could happen here is the user sends the HTTP request and let's say it's a, let's say it's a post, right? So it's a post and it's gonna have, you know, product, uh, I'll just put a couple things here, product slash maybe uh, stock, and it's a HTTP, um, you know, HTTP request 1.0, let's just say, okay, right? And then it's gonna have the typical, you know, content, I won't write all this stuff out, but content length and then, you know, or, or content type, I should say, and content length, uh, put those backwards, but you get the point. Content type, content length, just your typical, you know, HTTP request, right? Um, and then it's gonna include the API uh, or the URL, I should say, the URL that's gonna be sent back to the API. So let's say that there's a, you know, a stock API and that stock API is gonna equal, um, you know, HTTP slash slash, and then it's gonna be, you know, stock dot, you know, shop. This is the online shopping application, um, you know, dot net. And then I'm just gonna put some, you know, of uh, some some dots out that's good so this is going to include things like the product and uh you know the stock and the, like a check for the product id and just all those things are going to be included in this big url right and so again in the typical scenario the user sends this http request the app sends this stock api you know uh, call back to this restful api endpoint um, 
and then it and then that API sends back the information, right? This thing's in stock or not, right? So all of that, it sounds good and all that's the way it's supposed to work, right? Well, in server-side request forgery, kind of the name starts to give you an idea of what this is. So you're gonna take the server side, the application server, and you're going to forge a request to an unexpected endpoint, right? And you're going to get back information that you should not have been able to get back, right? So in this scenario, an attacker could modify all this and still, still send all of this stuff is the same, right? So it's still a post, it's still content type, you know, application, blah, 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 content length is whatever it is, right? But then they're gonna modify uh, this right here. They're gonna modify the URL. So instead of the stock API, blah, 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 they're gonna say stock API is, um, and I'm gonna put this here, so stock API equals uh, HTTP and colon colon, and then they're gonna send it right back into the app server itself. So localhost, right? So this is kind of the, uh, uh, just you know keeping it internal as it were, right? Slash admin, right? Okay, well that's not, that's not the way that this whole thing is designed to work because it's, it's supposed to be, hey, is this item in stock or not? But what the, what the attacker has done here, so this, I'll just put, you know, this is the attack uh, vector right here, right? So that what the attacker has done is taken advantage of the, of the functionality that works here and effectively is saying, hey, within the application server, I'm going to request a URL on the server itself that is the slash admin URL. And so here, the server, the application server, is going to fetch the contents of the slash admin URL and it's gonna return it back to the user, or in this case, the attacker, right? Um, now you could say, well, hey, couldn't the attacker just, just you know, navigate to slash admin on his own? And the answer is yes, but um, if things are built correctly, that particular URL request, just you know, navigating straight to that is not gonna return all of the goodies that you're looking for, right? So effectively what he's doing, what the attacker's doing is saying, hey, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forge this request and use the server to access that location because the server is a known trusted place, right? It's a known trusted entity. So, um, so then the contents of the slash admin URL from the server request are going to be returned in full, right? And then those are gonna be passed back to the attacker via this method right here. So anyway, so that's, a, that's one example. There's other ways to do server-side request forgery, but that's just one example. But effectively, you're taking the server, you're forging a request, and you're sending it to an unexpected place, right? And you're getting results that are you know, not, not the way that it's supposed to work. <laughs> Um, but then you're, you know, that you're, you're giving, you're giving the attacker information that you don't need to give them, right? Okay, so there's a couple of things that you can do in terms of, um, you know, uh, you know, preparing for this or to to guard against this. So there's a there's a, some network layer things you can do. So I'll, I'll, we'll look at network layer things you can do, and then application layer things you can do. All right, so on the network layer, you can segment out your remote resource. Uh, functionality, the access functionality of these remote resources into separate networks, and then that reduces the impact of SSRF, right? Server side request forgery. And then also you can enforce a deny by default firewall policy at the network level. Um, and then another good thing to do is log all of your accepted and blocked network flows on the, on the firewall, right? We talked about logging and monitoring uh, in the number nine security risk. So you, you should log those events on the uh, on on the network flows on the firewall, right? Okay, so that's a network layer. There's a couple of things you can do at the network layer, and then as you move up to the application layer, uh, you want to you want to sanitize and validate all of the client supplied input data. Um, so you know, again, here if you're looking at this and you need to sanitize, you need to validate that before you just run that. Um, and then also you can enforce the URL schema and the port and the destination with a positive like allow list, right? So, uh, so you can explicitly allow certain URL schemes and ports and destinations with that positive uh, allow list. So that'll, that'll help uh, you know, guard against some of this as well. So those are a couple of things you can do. Um, so again, this is, this is a, a big deal uh, based on the community input that was given via that survey. 
Um, and, uh, and so it's out there. So, you know, as, as cloud-based services, as modern architectures become more complex, this is going to become more and more of a, uh, of a problem. So, uh, so it's good to know about this thing. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.